Tala, where is my child? What happened? What did she feel? She said, I don't know. She's in there. I went in there and I saw my daughter's corpse. This Sola did not say anything to me. I went in there and I met my daughter on her deathbed. She was already dead when I got there and I saw her. All this happened in less than 10 minutes. She was already dead. She was drenched, soaked to the skin, water was dripping. I knelt down, I called on God, I shouted, I screamed, I felt her pulse, no pulse. I put my hand on her chest, it was deadly silent. My daughter was silent. I asked the doctor there, he said, doctor, what happened to my daughter? The woman looked at me and said, eh, madam, from the way I'm saying, say. Guys, that was the mother of the, of um, Whitney Adeniro. You know, the incident that happened in the Chrisland, Chrisland school, you know. You guys are aware of this incident that has been happening. One happened just uh, about uh, nine to 10 months ago, uh, with regard to a particular child that was uh, sexually abused. You know, the story was it's all over the internet. Now, um, this incident, I'm going to release the video for you guys to watch in just a moment. You're going to listen to it and see exactly what the mother has to say in full with regard to this incident because the, there's several of news on the social media now at the moment, you know, with regard to this incident of this uh, little uh, girl, Whitney Adenira, of 12 years old, you know. Some people say it was electrocuted. Some people say he died, he collapsed. Some people say it was uh, some sort of cardiac, cardiac arrest, you know. So different kinds of story when it comes to this situation like this. But I'm going to release the video to you just a moment to watch, you know. It is quite pathetic. It is quite sad. It is very, very terrible, to be honest, that situations like these has to be happening in a secondary school, you know. A, pub, a private secondary school uh, um, inter of international standard where there is no health and safety measure. Of, of, any, of any kind, you know, health and safety measure is quite important in every school, in, in schools like that of over 500 uh, students, you know, that when incidents happen like this, they have to start throwing it back and forth, you know, among themselves, you know, the principal will say something different from what the teachers are saying, all just to cover up because these people are well rooted in politics, you know, most of these parents are well rooted in politics, you know, they are connected one way or the other, you know, to, to the society, so there is you know, barely nothing you can do when it comes to a situation like this where your child is involved in a particular incident. I'm just going to leave you guys to watch the video in just a moment. I will be coming back in just a moment to talk about it. Okay, guys. Let me state what happened. February 9th was the day of their inter-house sports. That was the day they were meant to have their inter-house sports. Anybody who knows Chrisland knows that Chrisland has their inter-house sports as a Gage Stadium. Last year, I was not able to go on time. My daughter was angry. She said, Mom, you did not even come on time. You did not even come and see me take part in the match pass. And I was marching. I was looking for you. I said, I'm sorry. I didn't know the way. I didn't know how to find my way to Agege Stadium. But I promise you, next year, I will be there on time. This year, I tried to go there as early as possible. I was there even before the program started. I met the admin officer, I met the principal, I met part of the PTA committee, I met parents there, we greeted, I sat down. March pass started. When the March pass started, I looked. The first house matched. I didn't see my child. Second house matched. I didn't see my child. Third house matched. I didn't see my child. I said, uh -uh. she's in Pines, which is greenhouse. I said, uh, maybe she's um, among the Queen's entourage. Because I remember she mentioned that she's among the, the entourage of the Queen or King or something like that. This one's matched. I didn't see her. I said, okay, maybe she's in the arts and crafts or home economics or IT or photography, or something. Those ones all passed. I didn't see my child. I got worried. I called the school, her school bus driver. Mr. Said, please, oh, was my child among those you brought to the stadium that I have not seen her. I've been in this stadium now for going to some 30 minutes thereabouts, and I've not seen my daughter. He said, ah, mommy with me, I brought her. She's in the stadium there. Don't worry, you will see her. I quickly left to go and do some things. I said, okay. No problem. I, as this time, the match passed was still going on. You know, dignitaries, parents, teachers, you know, everybody was matching the year 12 final year students. They were all matching. I didn't want to interrupt the match pass because parents are opposite where children are kept. 
as after, after I finished speaking with the with the driver, he said he, he brought her. I said, okay. Maybe she got hungry and had to leave and buy something outside. Because she had breakfast before leaving the house. I made sure she had breakfast. Then she was going for inter house spot. And she was with money. I went to the snacks point outside. I didn't see my daughter. I said, ah, where could this girl be? So I waited. Much past was over. I crossed to the other side. On my way there, I met a, a man. The man said, ah, madam, parents are not allowed at this side. I said, ah, I know. I just want to check on my daughter. He said, okay. I went in there, and I saw some students there. And I asked a boy there, please. Meanwhile, before I got to that across, a bus sped by on high speed, zoomed. And I said, ah, how can a bus be driving like this when you know children are in the stadium? But I just said that and I, I went on my own. So when I saw the boy, I said, ah, please, I'm looking for Whitney. I didn't hear on. The boy said, ah, a girl just fainted here. But they have taken her, the school bus has taken her to the hospital. I said, ha, ah, a girl fainted. Oh, may God give her quick recovery. Why did she faint now? Anyway, I'm looking for Whitney, I didn't hear on. She's my daughter. The boy said, the girl that fell, her name is Whitney. I heard them calling Whitney, Whitney, when they were pouring her water, I said, Jesus. But it's not my own child. My daughter's name is Whitney Adeniro. And I brought out my phone. The boy said, I don't know her surname, but I know her name is Whitney. I brought out my phone and I showed the boy her picture. And he said, this is the girl that fell. I said, what? What happened to her? Why, why would my child fall? She hasn't done anything strenuous. She wasn't sick. She hasn't done any, any activity. What is going on? Why would my child faint? A man was there. The man said, ah, Madam Ibilo Durosi, Oshubu, Eminimodo Misilara. Meaning, she was standing here. She fell. I poured water on her. I said, ah, ah. Who took her? He said, school bus. No ambulance, no doctor, no nurse, no medical personnel, nobody. There was no emergency provision on ground in a place where you have over 500 students. In a place where you have over 100 parents. In a country where insecurity is so high. You kept our children in that field with no proper medical arrangements in case of any emergencies. When the boy said the school bus took, I said, oh. Was it my child that was in that bus that sped by? I ran out. I met a staff coming towards me. The staff said, Oh, Mommy Whitney, we've been looking for you. He was so calm and casual. I said, Oh, Mommy Whitney, we've been looking for you. Um, Whitney fell. I said, Yes. And then she fell. He said, Oh, yeah, she fell. But well, don't worry, she'll be fine. We've taken her to the hospital. I said, Okay, let's go to the hospital. Immediately, I picked my phone. I called my husband. My husband wasn't picking. His PA said he was in the meeting. I said, please get the phone across to him. I don't care who he's having that meeting with. Even if it is the governor, go and give him the phone. It's an emergency. The guy went and gave my husband the phone. I told my husband what happened. My husband said, okay, no problem. Go to the hospital. I will make a few calls, and I will meet you there myself. I'm on my way already. I asked the staff. Please, where is the hospital my daughter was taking to? So let him ask the principal. We asked the principal. Principal said it was Agege Central Hospital. I said Agege Central Hospital. She said yes. I brought out my phone. I put it on Google Map. It wasn't showing. I put it again. Agege Central Hospital. It was not showing. What I saw was Agege Central Mosque. I said, ah, Central Mosque, Central Hospital. Ma, it's not showing. She said, don't worry. Just ask around. Go. They would, they would tell you. We drove out of the stadium to the gates. We asked the gates men. We don't know. We asked, as we were driving, we were asking people, please, where's Agege Central Hospital? They said they don't know that. What they know is Agege General Hospital. And I called. I said, ma, is this Agege General Hospital or Central? I said, it is Central. It's very close to the stadium. What we couldn't locate it. Don't worry. Just ask around. Go. They would, they would tell you. We drove out of the stadium to the gates. We asked the gates men. We don't know. We ask as we are driving, we are asking people, please, where's Agege Central Hospital? They said they don't know that. What they know is Agege General Hospital. And I called. I said, Ma, is this Agege General Hospital or Central? I said it is Central. It's very close to the stadium. But we couldn't locate the place now. Nobody were, we were asking knew where it was. We were not able to get um, it on Google Map. I told the driver, you know what? Let's go to Agege Central Mosque. It is central, central. Maybe if we get to the central mosque, somebody will be able to help us and show us where the hospital is.
That was how we left. Fortunately, on our way there, before we got to the to the central mosque, we saw their school bus by the side of the road. So we automatically knew that was where she was. I jumped down from the school bus and I rushed in. Rushing in, I saw the woman that went with her, the staff that went with her. I said, Madam, where is my child? What happened? Why did she finish? She said, I don't know. She's in there. I went in there and I saw my daughter's corpse. This solar did not say anything to me. I went in there and I met my daughter on her deathbed. She was already dead when I got there and I saw her. All this happened in less than 10 minutes. She was already dead. She was drenched, soaked to the skin, water was dripping. I knelt down. I called on God. I shouted. I screamed. I felt her pulse. No pulse. I put my hand on her chest. It was deadly silent. My daughter was silent. I asked the doctor there. He said, doctor, what happened to my daughter? The woman looked at me and said, eh, madam, from the way I'm saying things, is like cardiac arrest. I said, cardiac what? Guys, that was a very pathetic incident. Very, very sad indeed. You know, the governor of Lagos State uh, declared the school closed. You know, the school has been shut down. And I want to believe it's temporarily because this school is going to be opened in the next to no time. You know, uh, don't forget that this incident, incident happened, you know, just about 10 months ago, just like I said, with regards to a 10-year-old girl of the same Chrisland school being uh was involved in sexual scandal and things like that after a few weeks the school was reopened to start operations you know now the school is being closed down now for the investigation to be conducted the investigation to be carried out you be, you'll be surprised that this school will be opened will be reopened to start operation in next to no time that is not what we are talking about what we are talking about is that the lagos state itself should go around all these schools to making sure that proper health and safety measure is in place not to be crying you know not not to be crying you know medicine after death or to cry it is too late to cry when this head is off that's what they say you know it is now time for the school to be closed down and to to continue to commence investigation and what have you but at the end of the day this school is just going to be reopened it's just quite very sad and nobody nobody will be brought to justice no individual no principal, no proprietors, no, 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 nobody will be brought to justice, you no, know, to face the wrath of the law with regard to the death of this uh, poor girl. May I still rest in the perfect peace? It's just that it's, it's, it's very, very sad. What the what the what the uh, the governor of, the, of of Lagos State and the people who are supposed to be concerned with health and safety of uh, you know health and safety of lives and property of people are only focusing on election twenty twenty three. They are forgotten about the lives of the people. You know, it is very, very terrible. I just want to read just a few paragraphs of what the mother said, you know, in addition to the video that you just watched. She said, Desola was electrocuted, you know. That's exactly what the mother confirmed. You listen to the video, you heard all that she said. She did. Desola was electrocuted. A source from another school has just told me she went to collect candy floors and stepped on candy floors naked wire. Okay, you know, and the school, the Chrisland school, know and have this information. And you did tell me that she passed out of cardiac arrest? No, I will not rest until justice is served. That's one of the, uh, you know, that's the statement coming from the mother. Until justice is served. But then is there justice in the country, Nigeria, here? How is justice going to be served? You know, we have the case of B B uh, Sylvester Ramon in Bowen College. Where is this justice? Was justice served? We have a lot of people, millions of people that have actually been, you know, that have died as a result of poor maintenance, as a result of poor uh, lack of proper maintenance, lack of proper health and safety in place. You know, nothing was done. You know, so if she said justice is going to be done, I will pray so that justice be served. You know, the school face the wrath of the law with regard to this particular incident that has happened. You know, she went further to say, this Allah is not sickly child. She was healthy. Please, guys, get your kids from that school. You know, now Lagos State gov government closed down this school. How can you pour water on someone electrocuted? How? 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 You know, this child was electrocuted and somebody somehow took a bucket of water and poured it on her. You know, it's so sad. It shows clearly that these people are not, these children, students are not even educated in, in the first place because they should know that. Once somebody is electrocuted, you don't have to take water near her, him or her, let alone pour the whole bucket of water on her. You know, maybe she would have survived, but because of the, the because they poured that water on her, 
that will make her not to survive it at all. She can't even survive for five for the next five minutes. You know, it's it's a very terrible situation. It's a very sad situation. And I hope that key, uh, people will start listening to this to, uh, to know that the proper health and safety is not present in these schools at all. You pay thousands, sometimes you pay millions of naira, you know, to put yourself, to put your world, your, your, your children in this particular school and they are not properly looked after. You know, it's a very terrible situation. So what is the essence of the money you pay? You might as well just leave your kids in a public school. At least you know that you're not wasting money because this is now you've wasted the money on that child. And at the end of the day, you've paid such amount of money on that particular child for her to get a better education, you know, to have a, a very good living environment. But unfortunately, the living environment is not even suitable. You know, it's quite unfortunate. May the soul of uh, the little girl Whitney at any rest in peace. You know, we just want the uh, state governor, the state government itself to switch into a, uh, immediate action. To making sure that they get to the root of this. But then even if they get to the root of it, what are they going to do? The girl is gone. The girl is gone. It's so very tired. Very, very bad. Very terrible indeed. Guy, it's so, so tired. So sad. Guy, what's your opinion on this? Whatever you think, you should leave it in the comment section. Do you think this school should be shut down completely? Because quite a few number of people have been saying the school must be closed down. Now, this is about the second time the incident is happening in that school in the last one year. This is terrible. This is really terrible. We don't know what's going to happen again. Who is going to happen to you? You know, whatever you feel, guys, leave it in the comment section for us. This is Christoph Media. We'll be talking to you again.